Oh wait, are we recording? What's going on everybody? My name is Leo Rydell and this is Geekly Goods and if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button for videos on the latest in movies, TV shows with a sprinkle of anime and gaming. Today I'm here to talk to you about Wonder Woman 1984 and I will not be spoiling because I want you to enjoy the movie without any spoilers. But I want to dive into what really works in this movie first and that's Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Now that is the pinnacle of this movie. She has become synonymous with Wonder Woman and is the very essence of the character. She plays her well, she's stoic, she's confident, she's brave, but she's also charming and charismatic and you can really feel that energy in this movie and Gal Gadot just brings it so well. Now she is a producer on the movie so I could definitely envision her being behind the scenes and really just taking to this character of Wonder Woman and making it her own and she does such a really good job of that and in all of her interactions with the cast members she just really imbues this. Now big pat on the back for Patty Jenkins because those action sequences were awesome. They did such an incredible job with the action. You had these really cool brushing leg sweeps across the floor that Wonder Woman would do. She would swing around poles and just clobber guys. But what was really cool about this movie that separates it from the first and even her BBS appearance is the use of the lasso of truth. She really used the lasso a lot in very creative ways this time. She used it as defense against bullets. She used it to rope up guys to swing from lightning bolts. Using the lasso in this movie was really cool and we didn't see that as much in the past movies. But now she's confident, she's Wonder Woman, she's at the top of her game, but she's still really low key in the movie as well. So that's really cool to get that lasso and just to get some more classic Wonder Woman in there. Because I don't know about you, but growing up, I was used to Wonder Woman using the lasso of truth, not the sword and shield as much in the comics. And Honestly, I don't think Linda Carter's character used the sword and shield at all. If I'm mistaken though, let me know. Let me know down in the comments, but I don't recall her using it much at all, if I'm being honest. But let's move on. Hans Zimmer kills this score. I mean, just crushes it. Look, he's been in some of the most fantastic movies doing the score. I mean, Interstellar, The Dark Knight Trilogy, Dunkirk. He's done so many phenomenal movies and his scores are always just so wonderfully timed with the ramp ups, the ramp downs of the orchestra. And that was no different here. Even Wonder Woman's theme got a better treatment from Hans Zimmer, in my opinion, in this movie. So we get to hear that guitar rocking theme, but it's just really well arranged by Hans Zimmer and he just kills it in this movie. The music is mwah, chef's kiss. It's phenomenal, guys. So take my word for that. It is amazing. Love the visuals. There is really bright colors. Very much reminds you of the 80s. It's got those greens, those blues, those purples, those pinks. It's just a nice bright color palette, but I noticed the costumes outside of Wonder Woman's like Wonder Woman costume when she was Diana, she had more muted looks. And so did Steve Trevor. CG wise, it was good. The lasso looked great, but I'll get to Cheetah a little bit later on. And speaking of the lasso, there are some really good Wonder Woman Easter eggs in this that classic fans of Wonder Woman will absolutely love. Super fans of Wonder Woman will be bananas over. And I'm not going to spoil too much, but I'll just say one thing, the lasso and truth comes in handy. That's all I'm gonna say, I don't wanna spoil. Pedro Pascal is also very fantastic as Maxwell Lord. While his motive I thought was a little bit generic and it's not as if we hadn't heard a villain that had this motive before, I still really liked his Maxwell Lord. He knew how to elevate, he knew how to go crazy with it. So I love getting to see him as Maxwell Lord and bringing his great acting range to this role. It's cool to see him as a villain because we've seen him as Prince Oberyn who was kind of a likable character and we've seen him as Mando who of course at, throughout the series gets better and better morally and we've seen him in more heroic roles but it's nice to see him in this cool villain role. Not that he hasn't played it before but it's very cool to get that this time. Now I want to move into some things that I thought didn't quite work as well and the first and most important I guess point would be Steve Trevor. There was some good to it because Chris Pine and Gal Gadot on camera together are really they're just great. They feel like they're in love. They really just scream that on camera together and they just have this really gracious energy on screen together. You could tell their characters really trust and love one another and that energy in the movie was really cool. 
But at the same time, I dial it back in and I think that's taking away from Barbara and Diana's relationship and of course the rivalry that forms around that. That really took away from that to me. We should be focusing on Maxwell Lord and Barbara Minerva in this movie and there seems to just be a lot of interference with the Steve Trevor stuff. There are some very cool scenes like you'll see one in the trailer where they're flying in a jet and there's these cool fireworks because it's 4th of July. That's really cool and there's some great visuals. And again, I love the acting from those two, especially the way Gal Gadot elevates in some of the scenes where she is with Steve Trevor. But I think that it just takes away from the story that we're supposed to be focusing on here. Maybe a little less Steve Trevor and the way that they brought him back was a little bit weird in my opinion. I thought going in that he wouldn't just come back in a normal way, so I expected it, but at the same time, a little bit weird how they brought him back, but you all let me know once you see the movie what you think about that. And going back to what I said about Pedro Pascal, his acting, fantastic, but I think the villain Maxwell Lord, he didn't really have a motive that we didn't see before. It was pretty generic. It, I don't want to spoil exactly what it is, but we've seen this type of villain before and it's not as if we haven't heard somebody say these things before. So a little generic. And speaking of villains, Barbara Minerva, AKA Cheetah, Ah, there's some missed opportunities there. Unfortunately, I did not like the cheetah look. I love the coat, the coat, the boots, Kristen Wiig even, I thought she was a pretty good villain. I thought she knew how to flip the switch pretty well from that nice demeanor she had in the beginning of the movie to being more of a villain. But we saw the look of Cheetah in a trailer as well and I just did not like the look in motion. I think when she was stopped, and when the camera would focus on her and she stood still, it wasn't as bad, but when she was moving, it just did not look good. Especially when she was fighting Wonder Woman, it oddly looked a little too blue and a little too dark. And it makes me wonder if with a little bit of color correcting and grading, would it have been a little bit better looking? Because I just did not like how it looked. I thought that was probably the biggest missed opportunity in the movie was just the way Cheetah looked and, and flowed and the way she moved was just a little funny. And going back to the Steve Trevor comment I had earlier, that takes away from the Barbara Minerva, Diana Prince friendship and rivalry that should be formed throughout this movie. I think that that needed a little bit more attention and I think they just relied a little too heavily on the Steve Trevor stuff. We got him in the first movie and I think that it was a great first film. I like this film a lot but I think that it dragged the movie back a little bit. And you know, we're in the 1980s where at being at the top of your game and having more than everything is something to be cherished. And you can definitely feel that in this movie through some of the decisions made by characters. Again, I don't want to spoil, but you can feel that theme in this movie. And it feels like they just relied a little bit too much on it with the Steve Trevor stuff, but y'all let me know though. When you see Wonder Woman 1984, what did you think of the movie? Did you think it was better than the first one? Because to be honest, I thought that it was about the same. I think they're about just as good. Both of them, I wouldn't call either movie like my favorite of the DCEU, but I would say it's a good movie and I really enjoyed it. I'm honestly gonna go back and watch it one more time. Wonder Woman 1984, if I had to give it a rating out of 10, I would give it an eight out of 10. I thought it was a solid, really fun movie. It was visually really beautiful. Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman, okay? She's the very essence and presence of that character. And you had a great villain in Maxwell Lord with a bit of a generic motive, but still Pedro Pascal was awesome. The score was amazing. The action sequences were amazing, but just a few missed opportunities. May namely, I would say with Cheetah. And I would say Kristen Wiig was good, not great in the role. I just think that there was a missed opportunity to focus more of the story on that. And I think some of the Steve Trevor stuff kind of trampled on that a little bit. And I maybe would have liked less of the Steve Trevor stuff. But you all let me know, guys, what did you think after you see the movie? And let me know. And are you looking forward to this movie? What are your questions? What are your thoughts about it? How did you feel? Let me know all of that down in the comments, everybody. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ding that bell for the latest notifications. And we will see you next time on Geekly Goods.